to turn right now to a question that we got from a viewer and an email uh, from someone named Ron who said the following. Mary Ellis? Yeah, he said, everyone wants some sort of person uh, in a graduation ceremony. Any chance we can ask Governor Cuomo or Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul if there's any chance, thoughts or plans to allow schools to have a social distancing graduation, maybe on their football fields. So we looked into that earlier today. A source told us that state leaders uh, were looking into developing a plan, putting out guidelines to allow for some types of graduation services, all while trying to keep safety the focus there. Well, then this afternoon, the governor actually got asked specifically about this. Here's what he said during his daily briefing. The issue is a public health issue, and you don't want people sick and dead. That's the issue, right? It's about death. It's about balancing the risk versus the reward, balancing uh, the, the desires and wants versus the consequences. So how about this? This afternoon we got official guidance from the state health department specifically on graduation ceremonies. Yeah, so the state says virtual ceremonies are best. We've seen those happening really around the country, but if districts do decide to do in person commencements, they must be drive in or drive through. Although the document does suggest that maybe school officials can do these individual graduation ceremonies, actually go to a student's house, present the diploma, take pictures. But as far as this idea that a lot of districts have put forward, maybe using the football field, a big open area, social distancing, um, the state is saying that that is prohibited. No more than 10 people in a gathering like that, even in a large space. So there are a lot of um, parents out there that we've heard from who wish the state would ease on this a little bit. Um, the state saying again that safety is the key and that only the drive in or drive through ceremonies are allowed as far as in person. Right, we've heard a lot from some smaller school districts, you know, who have small graduating classes where a football field, you know, with maybe only 50 graduates could be ample space. And if families are social distancing, you know, in football stands in a stadium, you could see that it could really be doable and safe. So yeah. uh, perhaps they'll continue to petition the governor to make certain exceptions for class size. We'll yeah. see and see if there is any change on that. Let's turn right now to something um, that was really a big change that we told you about that's happening today. This is a live picture right now at Remington Tavern. Um, up in North Tonawanda, and that is something that we haven't seen in a long time. People actually eating at a restaurant, not takeout, not delivery. Um, of course, this is Mary Alice, the outdoor venues now allowed to do this. That's right. I never thought I'd be so happy to see other people eating on a patio when I was not, uh, but it took a lot of work, obviously, uh, to make this happen. There are still a lot of state regulations uh, for those restaurant owners that are uh, still required to do social distancing. They're not able to fill to their normal capacity, obviously. And our Kelly Dudzik is going to be live at the top of the hour at six o'clock. And she's going to tell us a little bit more about how that's gone today for local restaurants. And right now we want to turn to another viewer question, and we've gotten a lot of questions similar to this. Someone said the Black Lives Matter protests are so important, but how long until we see a spike in COVID cases? There's no social distancing. Many people have been wearing masks at rallies here locally and across the country, and some have not. And masks really are not enough, according to Dr. John Torres with NBC News. Protests following the death of George Floyd are putting more people at risk for infection. The massive demonstrations taking place across the country are causing concern about a new explosion of cases over the next five to seven days. And many of these demonstrations are taking place in African American and Latino communities, which have already been disproportionately hit hard by the virus. So if you're going to participate, consider ways to protect yourself and those around you. Keep protests peaceful. Tear gas used in violent protests make people tear up and cough, dispersing respiratory droplets that can then travel further and contaminate more people. You could unknowingly then bring COVID-19 home to someone who's more vulnerable. Wear an eye covering in addition to your mask. While many people are wearing masks, it's not enough. Social distancing isn't happening in crowds of people and the close contact for extended periods of time could cause a sea of spread that could be catastrophic. 
Now, we've made progress against this virus, but these gatherings could lead to a major setback for the country and a greater burden of disease, so it's important we all do what we can to protect ourselves and our communities. Yeah, and, and I think it's going to be a little while before we get the full scope of um, how potentially um, dangerous, frankly, this ends up being in terms of COVID. That's true. And I know some people are really just keeping their fingers crossed that perhaps by the end of July or end of August, you know, things may have progressed so far. I mean, hospitalization rates will have gone down so low that they're able to do some of those graduations. We'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. Hey, when our town hall returns, why a top name in the NFL and also a Bills rookie are both apologizing. Adam Benini joins us live after this.